the system on your screen on the top or bottom left hand side you'll see an icon that says chat if you click on that it will open up the chat panel usually it's to the right and uh, there's a chat box there it usually defaults to hi kim kim saying hello uh, it usually defaults to all panelists if you can drop down that to all panelists and attendees and then everyone can see your chats uh, if you have uh, how are we going to handle questions along the way shana will you leave that in the chat okay so if you have any questions andrew is going to be presenting andrew hutchinson uh, head of uh, manatech Australasia customer service. Sorry, Andrew, if I haven't got quite your title correct there. No, that's all good. <laughs> uh, um, we'll be guiding us through the new Manatech Plus back office. So uh, there may be some questions along the way. If you have them, if you just type them in the chat box there, uh, we can uh, field those questions uh, as we go along or at the end of the presentation. So with that, Sharon, I will hand over to you. Thank you, Diane and Gary. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sharon Whiteman. Um, it's all of our great pl privilege to be here with every one of you. And uh, I'm really excited. I don't know if anybody knows how long I've been asking for something like this for Manatech. It's been like 10 years. I've, I've put mm, tens, twenties hours into writing to Manatech outlining. Something you don't know about me, is that one of my past lives, I was a database manager. <laughs> so I'm very, I'm looking at all the, I'm looking forward to really using this to its maximum. So we're very privileged today to have uh, Andrew with us. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you want us to call you Drew or Andrew, your preference? Uh, either, either or. Um, everyone keeps to go, uh, or it's, everyone's kind of starting to go with the Drew and I don't mind that. That's, yeah, that's up to you guys. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this morning we have Andrew Hutchison and Andrew is the team leader uh, for our customer service department. If you're in business partnership with Manatech, you know him. He's an extraordinary support for all of our uh, associate base and our customer base. He's been with Manatech for two years and just shortly after starting with Manatech, he had the opportunity to visit head office in Dallas. He experienced a week's training on all things Manatech and in particular focusing on the new Manatech Plus app and the back office that was being launched at the time. Andrew is the go-to person in Australasia for everything to do with the app and the back office and he's really super excited to be here with us today to give us you know our hands-on training and I know um, Andrew I'm going to hand over to you with a screen share so um, I'll make you panelist. And so we can walk through and Andrew, I sent you a few questions. I actually did some more exploring and answered a couple of my own. Okay. Um, uh, so I can see how you can segment contacts, but yes. I have a few more questions and we'll also, I'm sure have some from the field. So I will make you hand over you to host. Cool. So should be able to screen share now. Okay, is everyone seeing that? Yes, I Perfect. am. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for having me today. Um, I yeah, am here to basically try and answer any questions you've got with the with the new back office and the new app. Um, I know a lot of you probably um, weren't aware of the app up until this year, um, being that it was it was uh, launched what last year uh, Global Manifest. Um, so a few people then jumped on board. Uh, it has come a long way since then, uh, which yeah is the reason why I'm super excited about this. Um, it is basically a tool there for you to do uh, all of your business building on the go, uh, anywhere in the world, basically. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, I've showing you this screen at the moment, which is our manatech.com, um, you know, no, normal login. Uh, just so you know where you're heading once you actually have a subscription to Manatech Plus. Um, so as you can see here, we've got the quick links here. So once you've got a subscription, there will be a quick link just here, which you can click on and it will open up your back office straight away. Um, and 
uh, we're not going to look at that one though. Um, <laughs> if you are trying to talk to um, new clients and, and encouraging them to get onto Manatech Plus, uh, all you need to do is send them to the My Business under Manatech Plus. And here they'll learn a bit about what the Manatech Plus can do as well as their subscription. Don't worry about these prices. This is the US site. Um, our Australasian site doesn't actually have the Manatech Plus app, so I had to show you this one. Uh, so just don't worry or don't look at those prices, okay? <laughs> um, so once you have the Manatech Plus app and you're accessing it through the quick link, so this is all done on your computer, guys. Um, it will open up, not this page. It will open up to your new back office. Um, so this is our brand new back office, which is very exciting. Um, to start off with, it opens up to your dashboard. Uh, oh, before I go further, let me just let you know as well, every, almost every page has a guide me button. If you click on it, it'll take you through the quick steps of each, each of the functions on that page. Um, so you push the right arrow button to go to the next bit. Uh, or the cross to, to close it off, as well as this little question mark. Um, most of the pages also have this. If you have any questions or aren't sure of what each of the things do, you can click on the little question mark. It'll open up the frequently asked questions about that page and that page alone uh, and give you a, a couple of pointers on that. Um, so first up, we've got our Start Building My Business. You'll see here that we've got our five ticks that are currently gray. This is a tool um, set out for you guys to actually, or encourage you guys to jump on the app or your back office and actually build your business every day. Um, so when you actually do one of these functions, a green tick will appear to say that you've actually completed that task for a day. Um, now, if you were to send out uh, five emails, then five ticks will come up. Okay, uh, it doesn't have to be one of each. It can be five of the one thing. So adding five new contacts um, will give you five ticks. Uh, that's just a, a little encouragement for each day. Um, if we scroll down, we've got our set up my site area. Now, when you first get into Manatech Plus, um, when you access it through uh, the, my office on manatech.com, it'll actually take you through a five step um, kind of build your site straight away. So you'll actually find that uh, when, you, uh, when you get to this page that um, a few of these will already have ticks in them, uh, but some of them will have crosses still. So if there is a cross in one, all you need to do is uh, click on it and it'll take you to that page to complete that task. Um, what we want is five ticks if, or six ticks if, if we can. Oh, there is five. Um, this is, will give you maximum exposure um, and actually make your sites, uh, I think, really look good. Uh, it, they'll make them pop, I think. That's what I think. <laughs> uh, moving across, we have our quick links. Um, as you can see, we've got view contacts, uh, tools to help me build, enroll, and purchase Manatech products. Um, now, if you enroll from this page, it'll actually take you to our new customer um, acquisition page, which if you, uh, if you go to the join button on manatech.com, um, you will notice that there is a new way for people to sign up. Sorry, that didn't go to where I wanted it. Actually, let's just click on that and that should take us. There, there we go. So this is the new way that um, customers or new associates can actually sign up through manatech.com alone. Um, you can see that it pinpoints the benefits of being a preferred customer uh, and then the extra benefits you get as an associate also outlines the fee for each. Um, so clicking the enroll button through the new back office uh, is I guess a quick way of doing an enrollment I just wanted to, to bring that up because you will need to keep in mind that uh, when you do the enrollment through this button, you don't actually get to pick um, where your new associate will be placed in your business. Uh, just keep that in mind because that will mean that you will need to do a sponsor change um, if you don't want them 
just directly underneath you. Uh, so you'll need to send us an email, you know, within the same month, and then we can get that changed for you if you want to uh, want you know want to move them in your business. Um, purchase your products. Uh, that will actually take you uh, directly. If so, if you have gone to the new back office through uh, through my office. Sorry about that. Um, when you click on purchase uh, Manatech products, it will actually take you straight to uh, the Express Shop under your account. So if you happen to be doing something and go, oh, that's right, Gary needed an extra mana bears, um, you can click on purchase uh, Manatech products and that'll take you to the Express Shop so you can place a quick order. Um, bear in mind that the Express Shop is actually your account. You can't, um, you can ship it off to someone, but it, it'll, it's actually placed under your account, okay? Up here on the right, we have our to-do list. As you can see, I've created a few myself. Basil Dog is actually my dog <laughs> while I was doing some testing the other day. Um, so this is a quick to-do list. Uh, so when you log into your dashboard, you can see what you've got, what you've got to do. Um, these will actually turn red after seven days. So if you haven't done anything um, on your to-do list or it's been sitting there for seven days and you keep forgetting to do it or keep postponing it, after seven days, it will turn red to, to notify you that um, it, it's quite urgent now that you do this to-do. Um, as we know, a to-do list is, is, you know, things to do, but you want to try and get them done within the first couple of days. Uh, and then down here on the bottom right, we have our announcements. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing here at the moment. This will, um, to tell you the truth, I haven't actually seen this in action, but apparently this is supposed to update you on any new um, features to your back office or any new updates. Um, so then you can, you can check those out pretty much straight away. Okay. Um, Moving along, look, I haven't got the chat open, guys. So if there are any chats, um, please, uh, maybe if, um, Sharon, if you want to jump in and, and just ask me any questions along the way. Well, uh, I might ask you some now, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I'm not sure what you have planned, so excuse me if I'm jumping ahead. So You're on right. the setup, the five ticks for the setup my site. Yes. Um, what... Do, do, is there any information we should go through to help people to set that up? Because I know uh, yes. we had a question yesterday from within my team yes. in regards to the, um, well, that was before you get here, isn't it? So the, when you actually purchase, you get uh, access and you use your account number, is it? And a, and a link, a number that you get. How, how does that, when you actually go ahead and purchase this, what's this, how do you get to this point where you're in here and yes. setting up? So well, um, to get to this point, once you've um, placed your purchase for the, the app, uh, under, uh, or once you've logged into my office in manatech.com, you will have the quick link, uh, quick link um, uh, button to Manatech Plus. So when you click on that, it'll open up a new tab and that's where it'll have the four steps to actually set up your back office. Um, to tell you the truth, I don't actually know what those steps are other than um, I know one of them I think is to change your password. Um, so yeah, once you get through those steps, you'll then have, um, or you'll be able to get to a access code to then access the app. So bear in mind um, when you uh, sign up to start off with, your access code isn't always um, a password that you have, for, well, it isn't the password for your manatech.com website. As you can see here, we've got a username of manatech106 uh, and an access code of uh, numbers and letters. And that gets me into the app for the very first time. Once I'm in the app then, I can go to the um, profile screen or setting screen in, in the app and change the password. Perfect. So I'm going to ask silly questions. So when yeah. they register for that, they automatically get this back office and the Manatech Plus app. They come so you, partnered. Well, you have, yes, you, you've got access to both. You do need to download the app, of course, to your, to your smartphone. Uh, and that can be done through um, the Apple Store um, or Play Store for Android. Uh, right there yes. on the screen, it looks like. Yes. Yep. These two. Yeah. 
Um, so yes, you have access to both of those straight away as soon as you um, have the subscription. Um, don't forget and as does, well. Is there functionality mirrored? So in the, this back office with the contacts and stuff like that, is that the same as on the app? Uh, yes and no. Um, I was going to get to the app towards the end. Perfect. Um, okay. The app is, I'll answer it now though, but the app is basically a simplified version of this. Okay. Okay. You do have, um, uh, so you've got all the media tools. You can add contacts to it. Um, there's a feed page. Uh, now just on regards to the feed page, um, there's uh, basically like a, a news feed that is um, from the Facebook page. That is not our Facebook page though. It is the American Facebook page. Um, I am currently seeking to get that changed for, for updates with our Australasian Facebook page. So it's all relevant. Um, but just keep that in mind. Also, there are business tools within the app, um, as well as uh, here. I think the tools to help me build actually takes you to uh, an American site. Um, so just bear that in mind with a few of the things in the app. Um, but I can show you if you want to have exactly the same functionality as what we're getting in this back office, the computer version of the back office, you can actually do it through the app. Um, the, the app has recently been updated. So I would suggest that um, if you go to prospecting digital media, there is a video there uh, to show you the new back office, but this is just a little screenshot that I've taken. Um, this is the app. You'll see down here that we've got some um, icons. Uh, this first one, which um, is your media, that's what is defaulted. That's what will come up straight away. But if you look to the right, we've got um, this business icon. If you click on that, uh, it'll open this page, the additional services, this top one that I've circled. If you actually click on that, you will then be taken to this back office, um, this back office on a mobile version. So it opens up like this. And you see, you've got your dashboard, um, you've got your start building my business, the to-do list, um, set up my site, quick links, um, announcements, which are all those uh, different screens on this homepage. So start building my business, to-do, set up, quick links and announcements. Um, and then if you click on the menu button at the top right, you then get all these extra features, which are exactly the same as all of these. Oh, perfect. Okay, so you can actually do everything either on the app or um, on the computer. Uh, it, it's basically, the, the, yeah, this is the platform that you can take everywhere and anywhere and do your work anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So I wasn't an early adopter for the um, app because I don't get mobile reception at home. So uh, yes. would, I'd have to go down the road to learn it. But um, this is perfect for me for... Um, yeah. I'm sure that's probably relevant for everybody listening. And James has asked a question, this back to some of your earlier uh, content. Yes. Uh, we can still enroll through our usual way so we don't have to go through our sponsor change. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, the, yeah the, this, um, these quick link buttons are just here. Um, for, well, they're supposed to be there for convenience. Um, so if you wanted to do a quick enroll, you can do it through this way. Um, but by all means, well, technically this site um, is going to be an extra tab on top of your manatech.com my office page. So yeah. yes, you can definitely just go back to your my office. And of course, that's not working again today. Um, <laughs> uh, my office and uh, do the enrollment, you, you, you know, the normal way. Okay, perfect. And um, so when you log into the Manatech back office from your computer desktop and you go in, you log into Manatech, open it, it opens up in a new tab on your browser. Yes. How long does that back office tab stay open? Does it shut down after any length of time or do you have to log no. in? Again? No. So the back of this, this dashboard, this um, Manatech plus back office yeah. doesn't have a timeout like Manatech.com. Okay. So Great. it could technically stay open for a couple of hours. Um, so yeah. And in setting up, do you have any recommendations, I think, um, around usernames? So I know you can choose your, are they unique? Because I noticed when I chose mine, it didn't go through, didn't seem to go through a search to see if there was any other people using that name. No, it doesn't um, for this one, <laughs> uh, like it used to. Um, yeah. 
so to tell you the truth, I'm not 100% sure. Um, it, with the links, I don't think it has to be unique this time um, because when you actually click on uh, copy your site, yeah. there, there are numbers in that. Okay. Um, so, and I believe those numbers will be um, unique to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I haven't checked this part out yet. So, um, so that it, if you say, say for it, it, we had Andrew on here instead of Mantech 106, yep. there would be Andrew because there's obviously other Andrews in the world. There'd be Andrew and a number. Uh, no. So if we do that now, we'll click on save profile was successively updated. So no, nope, I've got Andrew here. And then the rest of um, my site names. Uh, so to me that that says that no, that, that that's just um, that you can have several different Andrews because it hasn't come up with an error or anything like that. What I was saying previously though, is I'm pretty sure if we click on this. Uh, yeah, it's changed to Andrew. Yep. Yep. Um, and if, so when I copy that link, it's just got andrew.myglococafe.com. Yeah. That, that when you click that link, um, say within an email, um, I'm going to put it up here. Um, got you there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got all my details. It's only got my name. Um, that's actually a really good question because I would have assumed that there would be other Andrews already using this. <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be something to find out. So maybe we can bring that back. Yes, um, definitely. Because that, you know, because there could be a recommendation then for people to go like put Sharon Whiteman in instead of just Sharon or, you know, so that. Yes. We yep. definitely need these to be unique links, but definitely. that's fantastic. So, and I, it looks like from what your screenshot here or your screen share, Andrew, that the new microsites are AU, so that they're available now. These the these sites. Remember when you back to all the little ones? They had. Um, if you go back to this the screen that had yes. those, yes. That, those ones say AU on them. Yep. Yep. So These I think Diana's awesome. asked a question that previously they went to the U.S. site. So, Diana, does that answer your question? Yeah. So, um, of course, the U.S. generally goes ahead with things prior to us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yes, they had access to these sites. Uh, yeah. And then when we uh, made the change come 1st of October, um, yeah. that's when we had access to this. So, you'll see that these all say AU. If I was to change the country up here um, to either Singapore or New Zealand, okay. then I would have the New Zealand or Singapore versions of these. Um, the, uh, while I've got this open, let me just um, show everyone that the, there used to be, or we used to um, have everything under the Australasia market. Okay. Um, that has now changed and we will eventually get rid of this Australasia market tab. Yeah. And they'll be this. Different, aren't they? yeah. Yes. Yes. So, and then everything will be under your different countries. Um, so yeah, that's just something to bear in mind. There are a few um, uh, media, um, uh, yeah, data media th things that are still in Australasia that yeah. we're transferring over to the single uh, countries. Okay. Um, and then once they're all transferred over, we will get rid of this. Um, so yeah. for Diana's question then, it could be, Diana, when you log in here, it defaults to US. So maybe look at this drop-down list up here at the top and see if it's chosen US or um, Australia. Now, the other, there's lots of questions, so I'm just okay. going to go back. Yep. Um, uh, so, Amanda Keeney, we've changed our username. We had to, um, should we change our username and password via the app or the website? Uh, either or. If you do it on one, it will affect the other. Okay. And the purchase of MT Manatech products, is that a one-time order? So back where you went um, to purchase products on that tab in the, the homepage of the back office? Yep. Purchase Manatech products. Is, can you set up an automatic order there or just a one-off? No, it's just a one-off. Okay, perfect. Um, 
think we answered Diana's. James, the custom links that we create in my office still re remain, or do we do them now through the new back office? I would suggest doing them through this. Okay. Um, you Look, you can still use the custom links. Um, we are trying to um, gradually move people over to these sites. Um, look, personally, I think these look a lot better. <laughs> um, and we still have a few, so, so basically, because of all the updates that have been taken place um, with, this, with our manatech.com site, the new customer acquisition, the new comp plan, these, um, I do know that a few things for the custom links have been um, put to the side and haven't been updated for a little while. So um, look, by all means, if you want to use the custom links, because that's what you used to, please do. Um, but just bear with us because I know there are a few updates with that that we still need to get done. Okay, so, uh, so, so for instance, if someone was doing family health and just wanted to do a link for Amritos and Mana Bears or somebody was doing the oils, um, they're not available in microsites at this time. Uh, no, so you can't do that through this? Yeah. Um, that would definitely be a custom link thing if you, so it, basically the custom link when, um, when you send that, it's taking, when a person clicks on that link, it's taking them straight to a, a shop page, a product page yeah. where yeah. they can purchase that product if they want to. And you're um, basically only giving them a range of products that you want to, um, or you can give them all of them. Um, yeah. Whereas this is uh, a little bit about Manatech and you get to choose which one you would prefer to send. So if you want to talk about the M5M program, um, you can do that one. Uh, and then through this, they actually can get, then get in contact with you as the associate. So you've got your details here. If I click on it, it'll just take me down the page and I can fill in my details, submit it. And then that, that will then send me a notification to say yeah. that someone wants more information. Yeah. And I've already got their first last name, email address, uh, and I've added that I want, want their phone number as well so I can call. Um, to get started, if we click on that, well, well that one obviously doesn't work. <laughs> we can't That's do a part of blind order. <laughs> <laughs> um, to get started, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to then take you to, um, uh, that's why it hasn't worked, probably because I've got uh, several Manatech sites open. Um, but to get started, generally would take you to, I believe, the customer acquisition page, the, you know, that enroll page that I took you to yeah. through here. It will take them to that so they can actually sign up straight away if they want. Um, the two without... option of customer or partner. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the, the video. I'm sure uh, move them that much that they enrolled yeah. straight away. I want to be uh, part of this. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's what the get started is. Um, but yeah, if they want more information on something, sorry, when they want more, if they want more information on something, then they'll yeah. get in contact with you. Excellent. Okay. So um, another question from Kelly in regards to using our own web domains. Um, so that would be sort of a masking type thing. Can we, customize any of the URLs in this? Uh, on the sites? Yeah. I imagine you'd have to set up your domain with a blind mask. So like kellyabrahamson.com with a blind mask directly to the business link, your life on your terms. Yes. So for uh, people getting into more technical things, I don't think probably can't. Cause it looks like there's, Manatech results, discover Manatech, my mission, 5 million, my Glyco Cafe. Those are the microsite URLs with your personalized username. Yes. So if Kelly, I'm thinking you're wanting to say if you had, you know, kellyabrahamson.com and you wanted to send it to life on your terms, you'd have to do a, a mask in the, your, with your um, host provider, I'd say a blind mask forward to this. So ask a question again, Kelly, if that didn't answer it, because we've got lots of questions here. So I'll just keep going. So if we have um, prospective people from another market, that's yep. when we change the country. So Mandakini, if we're sending it some information 
of a link to someone. Yes. How do you customize that? Uh, you mean a link from the site? So one of your sites? So say you want to send a life on your terms video to someone in Singapore. Uh, yes. So if we go back to prospecting digital media, um, and yes, you're exactly right. If we just change the country, we will get only the information for that country. Okay. Um, so it, that's kind of the, the videos are generally the same for a lot of them. Um, but when we go to PDFs, you've got price lists and stuff like that, that is only, um, available in, in that country. Um, so the same, if you, if any, anyone from here, we decided to go to Norway for a month, um, and wanted to do some prospecting there, we can get access to only their, their information. Um, or, or their detailed, like their products and that kind of stuff um, to then, you know, forward that on to them. This is, this is the same for the app. So when you're in the app, the top left-hand corner, you will see um, a little, um, it should be, I guess, whatever country you're in. Um, it should be the, that country's flag as the default. Um, if you were to click on that little country flag, top left-hand corner, you can then change the market. Um, so, exactly the same as what we would do here. Um, if so, like I said, if you went to Norway you, on the app, you can change uh, the market to Norway and then all the digital media that you get, um, have are available to see is what is um, available in that country in Norway. Okay, perfect. So if we did a blind example, so Mandakini has someone from Singapore that's interested in a business. So she wants to send the your life on your terms video. So we go, into digital media you said yep so up here on prospecting digital media we've got digital media yeah uh, so i've changed the country to singapore okay life um, on your terms life on your terms um so we can view this or we can just directly share okay so you have to do individual shares so you can't share say um or you can copy a link there so so if I was going to send someone a, a video and a PDF in Singapore on partnering with a business, we could copy the link there with that. Yes. So um, we can either tick the box, top right hand corner, oh, go I to see. actions, yep. where I can email that, um, or I can put it in a special folder. So if you've, if these, the favorites. yeah, generally you've got um, this action tool on most of the pages and you've got add to folders. Um, just below the folders, you will see that we've got to create new folder. Um, and Sharon, I believe uh, this was, was one of the questions you answered yourself. Um, yeah. If you create a new folder, say we create a new folder and call it new prospects, um, yeah. then you can click on your, the uh, videos that you think are, you're going to be sending to new prospects every time a, a new prospect comes through. Yeah. Once we click on it, we go action, add to folder. Yeah. Um, and place it in that new sign up folder. So every time you come to the digital media media page, yeah. you can click on that folder and then just email those videos straight away. You um, can customize your favorite um, or even for your team, you recommend, okay, so you've got a brand new partner. Okay, for if you're talking to a new partner, I recommend you send these digital medias, so life on your terms and one PDF yep. on M5M and put it into the new business partner folder yes yeah definitely. Um, yeah and then automatically send that so every time you're read you're talking to someone you've got a you can guide your new team members or you can customize it for yourself as you more um mature in your business yes okay yeah talk, talking about emails um there is uh, under the prospecting send an email yeah um so he uh, you, you can send an email to whoever um Basically, if you've, oh, I have jumped ahead a little bit here, sorry. Just going back one, under contacts, here we've got all of our contacts. If yeah. I, as you can see, I've created my own, um, you know, new uh, folder called new signups. Um, so clicking on that should open it. And I'm not sure why it's not. <laughs> um, yeah. So you create a new folder in order to segment your list. So, yes. and you segment your list on all kinds of reasons. It's going to be personal to you. You can segment all your new partners, your prospective 
preferred customers, your prospective partners, your someone that's interested in fat loss. You can segment your whole list and they can be in multiple, li multiple folders, can't they? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and once we've got these different folders with our contacts. Yeah. Uh, and for some reason, this is not working anymore. Is it frozen or something? Yeah. Maybe just refresh for now because there's lots of other questions. Um, I think I'm going to have to maybe stop sharing and share again because sure. nothing's working. Yeah. Let me do that first. Okay. And I'll just go through some of these questions. So Perfect. the message from Sonia to you, she thinks that the, the um, media is fixed, that she can now see all the media under Australia. So they must have moved the stuff yes. from Australasia that you were mentioning. Yes. And Kelly, how do I send a web link to someone in the US? What do I change? So Kelly, I think we might have answered that one, but just put another question if we didn't. From James, so will the get started now option allow the new prospect to order directly? So on that um, double page where you have a an opportunity to be a customer or an associate and it gives you the benefits. Yes. So can a new person go to that link, register now, and order immediately? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, so they would have to, of course, do the sign up um, yeah. or, or choose. Uh, well, that, uh, that actually, that page um, gives them a third option <laughs> of a retail order. Um, so if, uh, why has it gone back to that? Um, so yeah, yeah, this is really valuable. We could be here for a couple hours, Andrew. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm glad I could help. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So that that when they do this, so if they choose a customer or associate, um, they that'll take them through the sign up process, um, and then yeah, though they can start ordering products straight away. Great. So we got seven questions. So um, I'm just going through them one by one. Uh, Gary's saying, so do we cancel our current success track? To subscription and set up a new subscription with the Mantech Plus and what's the differences between basic and premium so the $18 versus the $30 okay so your 18 um sorry uh $18 is a uh, success sorry um let me <laughs> so the app by itself yep. is $18 premium premium success tracker by itself is $18 or you can bundle them and save a couple of dollars with it being $30 that's the difference between that. Um, the difference between uh, premium success tracker and basic success tracker, as most of you should know now, we've um, they've released or um, taken away that requirement that um, uh, once you get to 15 people or regional director, you no longer have access to the free success tracker. Free yeah. su basic su success tracker is now available to everyone, no matter what level. Um, but you only have access to four reports in basic okay. success tracker, whereas with premium, you've got all of them as well as your graphs and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. So um, we've gone, I think we're complete with all the questions. So please, uh, to date, please put any more questions you have in there. I'd like to highlight a little bit more about the contacts. Your, can you go back to contacts, Andrew? Yes. So, I think there's some real valuable things in your ability to be able to segment your list like I was talking. So for instance, um, I think the only folder that you've got there, Andrew, is the new signups. Yep. So, and you've got two people in your new signups. So theoretically, if you wanted to go to all your new signups and say, oh, brand new partners, I would like you to take a look at this um, list or take a look at this digital media, or I would like to send you an email announcement because I'm going to do a special training on zoom for our new partners. You just go to that folder that you've segmented your new partners and then you click them and then you can send them an email. Yep. Right. That's correct. So the other thing I'd like to ask, so that would be true for anything. So if you're wanting to segment, so say you've got a new preferred customer and they've started up on the, um, fat loss program, but they also have, were asking you a lot of questions about the oils. Yes. You could put them in two folders, right? So that if you ever want to do a promotion on oils, really all your preferred customers should get that. But if you had someone with a particular interest, you can highlight those. I wouldn't get too detailed. I would keep it to less, just, you know, a handful or two handfuls of segments. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because you could really market any announcement, like all the stuff that Manitech does such a great job of supporting us with the emails 
So how would we get those from our email? Because we probably don't get the emails, the corporate email. Say you've got the promo right now with the impact. Yes. And you want to send that to all your preferred customers. That, so you've got a new, I've already set up a preferred customer folder in here. Yep. So all my customers will go in there. I wouldn't care if they're a fat loss customer or an oil customer. I'd want to send them the impact announcement. How do we get that from our, what we get from corporate into sending an email? So you just good, copy and paste? Good question. Let's try that now. <laughs> uh, so um, as you can see, we can um, add images and all that kind of stuff through the email server on the back office. Uh, I'm just not exactly sure if we were to copy and paste uh, the email, but we're going to try that now, if that would work. Okay, well, it's not too bad. Uh, we can preview the message, of course. No, there's a few, it's yeah, there's a happening. Yeah. few things, um, possibly because I copied and pasted the whole thing. So yeah, like I said, it might just be because if Sometimes we, for those of you listening, if you're copying an HTML email, if you copy from the top frame, it gives you more than what you want. Yes. <laughs> so that's now just done the images. So you could, you have to play with this and get to learn how it works, but you could copy just the images like this. Then you can copy just the text. You can choose what you want from the corporate message. Just copy and paste into your browser and you can send this. Yeah. See, that looks pretty clean. Yep. So I don't, you'll just have to play with this because I know what Andrew's doing, but if you haven't done this before, you won't be able to see, but if you copy your whole email and it gives you too much, then start your cursor, not at the very top and not at the very bottom. So you're getting say a middle segment of the email or even individual segments and just do it bit by bit till you get the outcome that you want. So yeah, I, I'll bring, th this is the email I just copied over. Um, yeah. So I copied the image first and then yep. pasted it into, um, into our text box. Yep. Uh, and then I scroll down just from here yep. where the cursor comes up. Yep. Scroll down and then copied the remaining or the text and imported yep. it over. Without going to the very bottom. Cause see, yes. you can see there that he didn't go to the very bottom. So therefore you're not getting the full, you know, background HTML coding that sometimes looks, you need to know what you're doing to do that. But if you yeah. just go from, from in a middle component, yeah. then it, it doesn't copy everything, which is, so you can get a fairly professional email out to all your preferred customers. So I'd recommend you gradually adding in your preferred customers. You know, you can, you're, we're all different personalities. Some people will need to do it all in a big day. And some people, each person you're talking to add them to a list and you can segment them with, so uh, then just ask a question if this terminology doesn't work isn't clear for you, but with those folders, you can just create at least prospective partners, prospective customers, uh, preferred customers and partners, those four lists, because at minimum you should have the people segmented. Now, the other thing I wanted to know, Andrew, can you search on notes? So if you want to put a particular note and, you know, say you've got 500 people in here, cause that's where everybody's going or a thousand. And you can remember, oh, I'm, I've got that person. I can't remember their name, but I talked to them about this. And I know I put it in the notes because I did some testing on searching on notes and it didn't work. Okay. Good question. Um, I don't think um, we can. Uh... So if, the, if we had a wish list, because the other thing to do would be to have a keynote field. So, um, I mean, that'd be good to test on notes, to search on notes, but because I forget people's names, so I'm always searching <laughs> notes. Yeah, so that doesn't work. Yeah. yeah so doesn't. I, I, I put my note um, as great guy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you are. Yeah, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, tried to search for that and that hasn't come up. So no. Can we ask for that? Uh, that yeah, we can definitely ask for anything. No harm so in I, I think that they should either have a keyword field um, cause you can, sometimes you can segment with keywords, um, 
without having so many folders. Yes. So like you can have a preferred customer and you can put a keyword in there all, you know, fat loss because you want to remind yourself to send them information on that when new stuff comes out. Yes. Yep. Or you could have a million folders, but anyway. Um, so there's a couple more questions here. James is talking about the QR builder. So I have minimal knowledge of QR builder. Yep. But it's a way for people to use a screenshot little gobbledygook square <laughs> yeah. to a specific URL. So can you walk through how to do that and what the uses might be for people? Perfect. Um, so this is under prospecting. We have the QR code builder. Uh, once we're in this page, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, what we need to do is uh, look at the, oh, we're still in Singapore. Not that that really matters, but. No, but that's a good example. That's yep, perfect. Um, but uh, so I've just changed it to AU or Australia, and now we've got the AU here. Um, so the area of focus is going to be, yep, let's make it like a cafe. We'll, we'll go to health this time. Um, media. Uh, so the, the, this is just basically my contact details. So I can send them to uh, my website. Um, yeah. Yeah, or oh, contact. That's all the same. Uh, I did this. But the QR thing. Basically, so yeah, basically this is your QR code. If anyone yeah. has a, a QR code reader on their app, um, their, their smartphone phone. now, yeah. you can actually scan that and that will take you to my site with my details. Um, I've picked the True Health AU, so it should show you the, all the products on that, or not all the products, sorry, it should um, outline the, the true health system. Uh, I can change uh, bits of information. So this is a printable QR code label. Yes. Um, if we get, if we click on it, it'll actually give us a printable um, page. Wow. Uh, and this is for all your labels. This is, so the idea behind this is if you are selling products um, to people who aren't really aware of our products uh, and you want to give them a bit more information other than what's on the label or on the box, yeah. you can actually specify some details in this, um, you know, uh, or, you know, they're buying the Glyco Cafe, but you want to tell them about um, the True Health System. Yeah. Once, uh, once you've done all these details and uh, this has been updated, you can then print these labels off and stick them to your product. Um, so when you're selling at a market um, or at a store fair, uh, you can have these little QR codes on the products that you're giving pe to people. And mm. as they're walking away, they can actually then scan it if they've got the, the scanner on their phone and that'll take them directly to your Manatech site. Yeah. Um, so believe it or not, everybody, um, for those of you that this is very foreign to a lot of young people, <laughs> you are scope scan everything. So yes. um, it's a really amazing uh, integration into what we have. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you can see that it's got my details here. So even yeah. after they've seen my site, which will have my details on it, uh, yeah. when, when they get home, instead of actually going to the site, they can then just see my deta details and email me straight away. Yeah. Um, yeah, great little tool. Uh, if you're doing those kind of things like at the fair or um, doing stalls somewhere, um, yeah, and you and you want to give them a little bit more information. Excellent. Um, and James, just add, uh, could put one onto your business card, QR yes. reader, Colleen of New Zealand. <laughs> Colleen, are you on the call? <laughs> and so, yep, there's people saying that how cool that is. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's real. It's a free app to download. You just search QR reader. There's lots of choices and it's yes. just a little, um, I use an iPhone. So it's just a little, uh, whatever you call those things, picture on your iPhone and you open your app and it's, if even you can do it straight to this computer screen. So if you had one on your app, um, and you can, um, just screen your, the QR code, the little square, with your, my phone right now, and we could have gone to Andrew's site. Yeah. Um, so if uh, just there's two tabs here, the QR code help um, gives you okay, a bit of a detail about it. Uh, what they've suggested is a, an app called Red Laser. Um, I don't actually have that one myself. I've got a different one, but it works perfectly fine. Yeah. So if for those people that aren't aware of, you know, what QR code reader they need, um, possibly just 
just uh, search for the red laser one um, as that's the one they've suggested. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Okay. Red laser, everybody hear that? Red laser QR reader. So um, another question from Diana, great question. Some people will already have a digital form of their um, contacts. There is a bulk import um, option for contacts, isn't there? There certainly is. Um, now, when you download the app, uh, when you get to the contact um, tab on that, yep. it'll actually ask you if you want to scan, um, yeah, basically to scan. That's scanning all the contacts in your phone and yep. putting it directly into your app, um, which will also add it to this page. So remember, like I said, anything you do on the app um, is reflected through the back office, vice versa. Anything you do in the back office is reflected in the app. Yep. The app has this kind of cool little tool though, um, it's almost like Tinder for your contacts. Uh, you can, once your contacts have been uh, downloaded into the app, uh, yeah. there is a swipe function. If you look to the top right hand corner of the app, um, there's three uh, little icons. The middle one, which is a finger swiping right, uh, is the swipe function. So okay. when you're in the swipe function on the contacts in your app, you can swipe right for hot, left for cold, yeah. up, uh, to skip, I believe it is, and then down to delete. So if you've imported all your contacts from your from your phone, but you know, like half of them are, um, yep. are, are, so are long lost relatives yep. that you've never spoken to uh, except for that one time, um, you can click, you can swipe down, and it'll actually remove it from your contacts, so you don't have to keep missing them when you want to click all or something like that. Um, okay. There also is the function to do an import in here. So under contacts, we have the import contacts. It gives you several different options on how to do this. Um, uh, basically though, you would be um, filling in like an Excel spreadsheet uh, with the contacts details and then importing it that way. Um, or th this one from your Yahoo. Um, it, it's not just Yahoo, you can do it from your other email servers, I'm pretty sure. Contacts from, no. So you can only do from Yahoo for email. Um, but yeah, there, there is those other options of, um, if you, where is it? Download an example um, CSV file. So once you download that, it'll actually give you an Excel spreadsheet um, of their example. You can then delete their contacts, but keep the fields up the top and then add your own contacts underneath. Okay. And then yeah. once you've saved that, don't forget to save it. It needs to still be this file type. Save okay. as a CSV. Yep. Yep. So um, generally speaking, when you, when it's an Excel spreadsheet and you just click on save as it'll come up as Excel workbook um, or worksheet, you need yeah. to then click on the file. Uh, wherever, but you need to click on this save as type. Oh, and that's ready. actually came up as a CSV anyway. So yeah. that one worked for me. And we, you need to make sure that the fields then that you've got in there match the fields that are in. So probably on the import process. So if we're going to import this, you're so clever, Andrew. So if you went ahead to import this now into the CSV, into your contacts in the Manatech back office. Yes it would have you match up the, um, the fields. So it'll, it'll have you, typically when you do an import like this, it'll have you match up the first name, the last name, phone numbers. Let's try that now. So what you've Andrew's just done. Sorry, did I do that too fast? <laughs> Probably for some Sorry. people, depends how, if they've done this before, but he's just now uploaded it into the back office, that CSV example file, and it's automatically worked out. Yep. Fields. So, so if you go off their example, like I said, if you just delete all the details underneath that top line, yeah. And then fill in the, the details down as it says up the top. So, last name so and first name. It your would, example, let me ask you this, Andrew, your yep. example, did it already have the fields in the right order? I missed that. So you yes, already sorry. 
Sorry, yep, so let me... In whatever they're imported is different. There might be a different... Anyway, that right. might be more detail than what people need today, today. But if you have trouble with importing CSV, are you going to do another? No, no. So I just wanted to show you that with the example that you download, yeah, it already has the headings up the top. Okay. So, and the, the list, the, the names below were just, as it said, examples. Yeah. So if you just deleted the information from row two down, and then as it states, fill in the details oh, I see. Um, go down going down then and you, you don't actually have to have all the details so yeah. if, if you only have their first name then just fill in their first name don't yeah. just leave that the last name blank yeah. it will still import it into the correct field okay so then if somebody has an existing list they need to match it up with this template that is offered correct so say you've been working on a list on your computer, you know, some people, people do all kinds of things. Um, I know that I used Navigate and I expect exported all my um, contacts when that finished. Yes. So I'd have to look at, go find that wherever it is. Um, Cause I kind of had a, a cranky pants. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put it into anything else. Cause I thought this is too hard. <laughs> um, so I've still got that file somewhere. Uh, I could, but it's not going to be set up in these exact same fields. So if anybody else was a Navigate user, just as an example, you may have another, you know, contact manager of some kind where you can export the data and import it into this. You'd have to make sure that you match it up with the existing fields. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yes. Yeah, yep. So I'll have so to go back and look at what the criteria were in that other full thought CSV file. Um, yeah, so um, as you can see, there's also a, a copy and paste um, capability. Okay. So this might be more along the lines of uh, your example. Um, yeah. So from an Excel spreadsheet, you can just copy the information on your Excel spreadsheet and paste it into this box here. Okay, so for using my Navigate, Navigate CSV uh, file example, I could get open Excel or, or open the CSV file in Excel right. and then match. If you can see there on the right hand side, it tells you the allowed field names. Yes. So I would match those and delete all the other columns. Yes. And then copy and paste into here would be another way, or I could ex export save as a CSV in Excel. Uh, yes. Yeah. And then just upload that. So does anybody that has an interest in that have, a, was that not clear? So if you want to just put a question, if that didn't make sense for you, if you've got a, a list somewhere, maybe even an Excel of contacts you want to import. Um, thanks, Sue. Uh, you can, there's a few different ways you can do it. And hopefully that explains some options. So we are at an hour. Um, I'll just double check my, oh no, it's searchable, yeah. So I think I've done all my questions that I thought of ahead of time. Um, Anybody else have a question for Andrew before um, we let him go? So obviously, I think there's going to be lots of trial and error. Will you come back again? Because yes. yeah, definitely. If you, if you guys <laughs> yeah have more questions, more than happy to help. Because I think people will go away and watch this. So I will do my best, just for everybody's background. Um, I've filled up the iCloud storage for our Saturday calls. So I have to go through um, and download any videos that we need as MP4s and I'll upload them to a specific folder on my YouTube channel. Um, and so those, and then I'll put the link to those in the back office or in my um, call archive or Saturday call at archive. Um, I'll do this one as soon as possible. And any right now in the in the my call archive, any past videos like the Thai Tribbles, anyone that's shared a screen that we need the video components, I'll have to do the same for them. So I will do that this week, but I'll prioritize this one so it'll be available on video in the Richard Lives Saturday Call archive. So I'll do that by tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I think. <laughs> 
um, there, there's more. So maybe, Andrew, are you busy next Saturday? Uh, next Saturday. Uh, what's Same time. The date? Um, 14th is 21st. Let me just quickly check my calendar. So we can work out. Um, I mean, failing that we can work out another time because we already have requests. So, and definitely, you know, uh, Chris Pitcher completely understand your brain is exploding. And especially like I, you can see that I have lots of experience in database managing. So my questions are quite, quite strong. If that you yeah. don't have that kind of experience, then what you, you don't need to know all that. You no. just start putting your contacts in here one by one as you're talking to them. And I actually, I'm probably going to do that. My Andrew, just my um, sync with, my address book contacts failed. It keeps giving me this, it's trying to work. And every time I start up, it's telling me it's not working oh, so really? it's not for some reason. I'm not sure why uh, it could, but anyway, that, that's um, through the app. Yeah. Ah, oh. And I don't, and I actually don't want all my contacts synced anyway. So I need to go back and say no somehow because <laughs> uh, it, I don't have all my Mantech contacts in there anyway. I've always done it in separate separate. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, if you do have, we'll coordinate another time to come back. But what that needs from everybody listening, it means that you need to go forth and practice all this so that when you come back, you've rewatched this, you've practiced starting adding it, and we can help you. And I think there's a lot of scope, and maybe James can come on or somebody else that's really used the app a lot for what you'd recommend. And I know Sonia's used it a lot. So I, because of my um, mobile signal problems, I haven't used the app. So I'm not as au fait with all the resources that are available and what people are recommending and what really works. So we can help you with some ideas of how to customize this for your business and your style. Yep. So Drew, God bless you. It's been fantastic. Um, really great job of helping us. And um, you and I can, I won't put you on the spot for next Saturday. But uh, no, well, I'm free. So that's all good. Are you? Okay, <laughs> yeah. well, let's do another one next. Cause I think, so for everybody listening, if we're going to use Drew's time next Saturday morning again, so this is above and beyond obviously in supporting us, please um, come with more questions and more practice this week. And I'll make sure I have the recording of this available to all of us by tomorrow. Perfect. So thanks yeah. everyone. Um, we'll have part two of this. We can go more in depth and I'll commit to doing the same thing. I'll have lots of practice by then and I'll be have more questions. So Drew, <laughs> thank you so very much. Um, everybody. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thank you guys. Right. Bye everyone.